we've done over 200, maybe even approaching 250 employment agreement reviews. And so you give, begin to get an idea of the tapestry of, the, of, of what happens in these various places. And of the things that we look at fairly quickly, uh, it's always important to explain to people what the, what the term of the agreement is. People get a two, three, four year, five year contract and they think they've got a job for that period of time. Almost always we have to explain to them that there's a, it's an at-will employment relationship. They could be fired at any time and sometimes there are notice periods that are applicable, other times they're not. So you wind up with a three-year contract that's actually a 60-day contract. Uh, that isn't as much what we're searching for as, as it is to inform our clients. Uh, we can't give them legal advice, we can get, but we can read the contract, point out standard clauses and help them understand what those mean and then if they need legal advice to, for local law, we usually try to find or encourage them to find local counsel for that. Uh, another area that is that we're really getting more and more sensitive about has to do with just malpractice. And malpractice coverage is usually part of the component of what you're offered when you do a job. Uh, and the, that, that malpractice is being covered. But the problems that we see sometimes is that it's a remarkably low level of coverage or the, the coverage that is being offered isn't even described in the contract. It's, it may just say, we'll, we'll get you your, med your medical malpractice or professional liability coverage. And it's an empty promise in the sense of you don't know what you're being covered. Common lawsuits against midwives are often in the million dollar range if there, is, if there are findings. Uh, because you're usually dealing with something that where there was an injury that's going to be out over a protracted period of time, especially something like a neurological injury for a child. So having, we recently reviewed one that had $100,000 coverage. Uh, that's less than what most people have on their cars for a car wreck. So looking at the amount of coverage. Then the type of coverage, uh, we, we, I won't get into the weeds of different kinds of coverage at the moment, but making sure that you're covered not only during the time you're employed, but then there's such a thing called tail coverage. And tail coverage involves covering that liability after you leave em employment or you leave that insurance company. So many, you have to balance between whether or not you want to take a job that on all other aspects appear to be fine, but if you, have to, if you leave that job, you still have a fairly sizable liability uh, to get the tail coverage so that you can get the next job because the new job isn't going to want to pick up the liability for the previous job. So explain to people what those options are and ways in which you can begin to negotiate are very, very important. And probably the next major piece is looking for whether or not there are non-compete clauses. Uh, you, leave the, you leave a job doing your midwifery practice and you'd want to stay within your community. You may not think you're going to stay within your community, but people get married, they have children, uh, all kinds of other things tie them down. If the non-compete is so broad, and there, there are several elements to non-competes, but if it's so broad that it, that it eliminates your ability to practice in your community and you either have to choose a new career after you leave this job or relocate, um, that also may have a chilling effect on whether you want to be involved in that job. Uh, and then finally, there are a lot of risks sh uh, shifting uh, kind of elements that come into these contracts. And what I mean by that uh, would be fi things like just simply the liability of what you do day to day for your employer. Some contracts make you personally responsible for the employer's risk when you're working for the employer. Um, those sorts of clauses are troublesome. Uh, attorney fees are another one. Uh, because many of these contracts will, will make the midwife pay all attorney fees for the practice if there's a dispute, regardless of what that dispute is, sometimes not even if they didn't prevail, um, even if the practice didn't prevail, or if any portion of it they prevailed, so you have three things in, at play in the argument and they win one and you win two, you still would, under the contract, owe for fees. So looking at the fees and those sorts of things. Uh, finally, we also always look at the notice provisions that are within the contract because those are the kind of things that you can read, just read right over and not notice. Um, redundant notice to notice, but uh, the idea is that you, that you have to know who you specifically need to tell for fundamental pieces within this contract. 
we're so used to working for, for whoever immediately supervises us or whoever is our teammate that sometimes these notice provisions require you to, to provide formal notice to a third party, maybe a principal member in the, pra in the practice uh, partnership, ownership, um, or a specific method. So those are, those are probably the major pieces that we look for in an employment contracts, but we also just have to go through and read the whole thing. It's sort of a teamwork approach. Um, it, while it's not legal advice, there's an awful lot of scholarship about what are in contracts, we're comparing one contract to another. Then finally, what to do with these differences because we have seen egregious contracts that we really thought, you know, this potential employer is doing something just outrageous and our clients go to challenge the contract and they've actually never read the contract either. They, whatever, they had a cousin that was a lawyer or something or, or did some internet searching, found something entitled employment agreement and then put this out and don't, didn't even realize the unfairness of what they were proposing. So, you know, they, they believe they have to have a, a, a document called a, an employment contract, which they don't. And if they do, uh, they just need one and they are all sort of one size fits all. So it's some potential conflict management or conflict prevention that's important as you move through this phase of working on a contract.